What's up, good people? I hope you are doing extremely well and welcome to another weekend wealth and wellness where we explore the connection between wellness and building wealth. I'm your host, Free Spur, and so I want to talk about being self aware and self awareness and how self awareness really leads us to a point of being more sound in our finances and in our health and just in our lives. And when we're talking about self awareness, um, You know, the dictionary defines self-awareness as the conscious knowledge of our character, our motives and our feelings and how those things are applied to the situations in our lives. That's what self-awareness is in the dictionary terms. But I really want to talk about how we can use our self-awareness to really better our lives. You know, your character is something that is nurtured over time. You know, it's not always something that you see on the surface. You know, a lot of times with our character, we are, you know, doing things that we have learned early on in life and we have learned over a period of time in dealing with other people and other situations. And, um, you know, if you're never brought into question about those things, you know, your character or your characteristics can kind of walk with you for your life, you know, for the span of your life, they can stick with you good or bad. You know, you can have good or bad characteristics that really stick with you for your life. And, you know, if you are never confronted with a situation of change for those things, those can be things that can either be helpful or harmful for you. And, you know, I really want to talk about that right now and how we can kind of recognize if we are being self-aware in our lives and how we are using that to our advantage. A lot of times we're on autopilot, you know, we're doing things in our lives that are really taking place in a silo of consciousness where we're not really there. (laughs) We're not really there 100 percent. You know, we're so in tune with doing those things and um, just connecting those dots every day that we're not really present. So, um, you know, that is the opposite of self-awareness when you are just kind of doing things that are routine things that get you from point A to point B. And a lot of times that makes it very difficult for us to really achieve things that we want to achieve and advance at things that we want to advance at in life, because sometimes achievement takes change. And it takes a different level of effort than just your mundane effort that you're giving out. Um, So to reach that point of effort, you have to be doing something different. And a lot of times to do something different, you have to be aware that you're not doing or aware that you're doing the same things over and over and over again, Um, which is a lot of the reasons why, you know, people tend to get into the same types of trouble. Like you'll find situations where, you know, people are getting into the same types of trouble and you're like, why are they doing that over and over? And they know the result. They know what's going to happen. Um, and they know that, you know, and, and, and if you talk to people, you know, in their heart, they want to change, you know, they want to do something different, but you become so used to doing the same things over and over and living on autopilot that you're not really aware that you're not changing. So one of the really key things that you have to do is recognize when you are living your life on autopilot, when you are doing things that are not um, allowing change or allowing positive change in your life. And that's a really powerful thing to do. That's a really powerful thing to recognize about yourself is when you are in a situation where you're not allowing change, you know, you're not allowing things to get better or be different. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy to see that and get to the point where you can evolve that situation because, you know, we're so hardwired to continue into the, to continue in safe behavior or what we consider safe behavior. You know, our brains are, are wired to, recognize behavior patterns and do the things that we feel are safe for us to do over and over and over again, even if, you know, in the long term, those things are harmful for us or not exactly helpful for our growth. You know, there's a difference in, you know, being in a situation where you can predict, kind of predict what's happening and that's a safe situation 
but it also not allowing you to grow in any way than, you know, being uncomfortable in a situation and that be a situation or uh, a moment in time that is going to allow you to grow exponentially um, and really prosper and do the things that you want to do in life. You know, it's those two different scenarios are very common. One is one of enlightenment and awareness and the other is the one of autopilot, being on autopilot. And you really have to choose if you're gonna live your life on autopilot or if you're going to be aware and be self-aware about where you are and start to make strides in the other direction. And yeah, it is a choice, it is a choice. It's not an easy choice, but it's your choice to make. And you know, I really wanna talk about some you know, things that we can do, some tools that we can use to help us get to that point. It's really about curving your behavior and, you know, adopting new behaviors when you can, because again, it's not always the thing that you can do right off the bat, but one of the things that helps us enter into new behaviors and new ways of thinking is to surround ourselves by things that will uh, encourage that. You know, if you are in an environment that is keeping you in a certain mode of thinking, if you can change that environment when you can, um, even for a short period of time, a lot of times that goes a long way to helping you get out of the mindset that you're in just by getting out of the environment that you're in. So definitely take advantage of that when you can and be mindful about that. If you are doing the same things uh, in the same environments, be mindful that you have the power to change that. You know, sometimes it's as simple as going outside, you know, going for a walk or um, just doing something a little different than you're used to doing. Sitting in a different room. If you can't go outside, you know, going in a different room and doing activities in a different room than you used to will sometimes give you that different perspective. It's just changing your perspective, you know, that helps us be more aware of where we are and become more aware of the things that we're doing. Um, the next thing is, you know, really thinking about how you feel about things, how you feel and, how, and what you believe about yourself and your surroundings is huge in terms of being able to effectively change those things or create positive scenarios within those things. You know, for instance, if you want to improve your financial situation and you really have a handle on what you're doing habitually every day, and if those things are not yielding a result and you want to change that, you need to change what you're doing habitually every day. And even those subtle changes, for example, if you are wanting to save money, but you are eating out every day, you know, just a simple change of that, you know, having more meals at home changes the outcome because you are changing behavior that is causing the adversity. And we, you know, really need to start understanding that what we do habitually every day is who we are habitually every day. And I know it can be complicated from an emotional standpoint. So that is really where we have to start to take control of our self-awareness, really understanding the core of our feelings and why we feel a certain way begins to give us a path of how we can change those things. You know, really defining, you know, why am I feeling this way? You know, why am I constantly feeling like I can't work out today? Why am I constantly feeling like, oh, I need to oversleep or I can't get up in the morning? You know, why, why do I feel these things? So being self-aware is really about understanding why you're doing specific things. Getting to the core of, you know, why you're overspending, why you're overeating, why are you doing things that are harmful or positive for yourself, not just harmful. You know, sometimes we get into this mindset of always having to think about the negative and evaluate the negative, but it's also a good thing to look at the positive things that you're doing in your life and the positive things that you are affecting in other people's lives and the positive energies that you're producing and giving out and understanding why, why, why am I, why am I in a good mood uh, on this particular day? Why am I able to positively affect this person's life, you know, in this environment? 
those things are important because those are the cues to how you can increase that positivity or give that more place in your life. Once you get at the core of why you're doing those specific things, we can really start to chart a course on how we're going to change them. And when you become self-aware, you begin to realize that the power is always yours to change your outcomes. I hope this has been extremely helpful for someone. And until we talk again, I wish you health, wealth, and freedom.